Today we're going to talk about blood. We're going to talk about the definition of blood, the fact that it's composed of fluid as well as cells. You have uh, red blood cells that carry oxygen and carbon dioxide to and from the lungs. We also have the white blood cells, which are the immune cells that guard us against uh, pathogens or maybe guard us against cancer cells that we develop. So we'll be talking about the structure and function of those cells as well as uh, the function of platelets into preventing the loss of blood in the case of bleeding. So the function of blood is the transportation of the fluids and cells throughout the body to carry nutrients to the cells and to bring the waste back to excretory organs. Thank you. If you use this uh, information, please share it with your friend and please consider subscribing to VIBS Histology YouTube. Thank you. Today we're going to talk about blood. Now blood is a fluid tissue. It's composed of cells erythrocytes or red blood cells and leukocytes or white blood cells and platelets and fluid is what uh, blood is composed of and the function of blood is the transportation of the cells and fluid it carries oxygen to and carbon dioxide from the tissues of the body to exchange with the external environment and here if you look over to the right of this graph you can see the oxygen pressure here is greater in blood right after the lungs so it lung picks it up and then through the capillaries of the blood system oxygen tension goes down and it repeats that over and over again and carbon dioxide is released in the lungs so function of blood is transportation of the cells and fluid and some of those cells are white blood cells and that's for the immune system defense of the body and the plasma itself uh, provides nutrients to tissue a waste from tissues it has proteins that holds water into pl plasma albumin being one of those it has hormones and other informational molecules and also it has platelets and the function of platelets is to prevent the loss of of the transportation of the blood and fluid to provide the nutrients of and or getting rid of waste from the body as well as oxygen to carbon dioxide. Here we see blood and we see this this is a drawing of blood. We see the red blood cells and we see neutrophils and we see eosinophil there. There's another eosinophil, red blood cells. The platelets are the little small things. A basophil is hard to find. You can see the blue granules. The monocyte can't see the cytoplasm but it's around here, kind of horseshoe shaped and the bigger, much bigger than the red blood cells and then you have lymphocytes as well. We look at a peripheral blood smear from human, we can see a red blood cells in through here. The smaller ones are the platelets that we can see. And the red blood cells are actually not what's released from the bone marrow. It's reticular sites. And they have a blue tint, and you can see the kind of blue tint to these cells, reticular sites. They go through the spleen a couple of times, and then they become erythrocytes. So the red blood cells that we see all were uh, reticular sites that were released from the bone marrow and goes through the circulation a couple of times and then becomes erythrocytes as it loses its blue tint. It loses the ribosomes that are in there. We see a, a couple of neutrophils. And here we can see these are erythrocytes, an uh, electron microscopic view, which is very dense because of the high concentration of hemoglobin. But if you look at a reticular site, you can see a little bit of mitochondria in there, but also you can see ribosomes. It still has the ribosomes, but gives is blue tint. If we look at a younger cell type, and we will talk about these a little later on, erythropoiesis, uh, right in here is a polychrom polychromatic erythroblast, and here we can see blue and kind of gray, and that's due to the hemoglobin and the ribosomes in combination makes it polychromatic or more than one color. Point being that is the, it's the uh, ribosome that makes reticulocytes blue. And here we can see again a eosinophil, a lymphocytes, monocytes, we saw those and we can see it in another type of draw and these are neutrophils here with the small granules, a libellated nucleus, also a libellated nucleus with eosinophil with big red granules and then the basophil likewise has large granules and a libellated nucleus. So three have libellated nuclei, then lymphocyte has a small nucleus, uh, a small cell, and a fairly large nucleus cytoplasm ratio, and then we have some monocytes as well. So if we look at these, a neutrophil, eosinophil, libellated nucleus, libellated nucleus for the basophil with these blue granules, and then a smaller cell, mostly the nucleus, is the lymphocyte, and then the monocyte, and we can see those again. If you draw, draw these out, the first three cells have libellated nucleus. The, the neutrophil, the granules are so small you can hardly see them. Very fine granularity in nature there. Big red granules are the eosinophil, large blue granules for the basophil. Lymphocyte, mostly nucleus, 
horseshoe shape for the monocyte. Those are the different ones. And we looked at the electron microscopic level. You see the neutrophil. It has granules, but not as large as the eosinophils or the basophils. All three of these are libellated nucleus. This is just one nucleus we, there and there is just one nucleus too. It's just different lobes of the same nucleus. A lymphocyte, ribosomes, a little cytoplasm there, and mitochondria, and then a monocyte. Monocyte has more organelles ready to combat it, whatever, ingests as it becomes a macrophage. And here you can see the different cells here a neutrophil, eosinophil, basophil, lymphocyte, and monocyte. Again, we can see those. Uh, here is the eosinophil, big granules, lobulated nucleus, lobulated nucleus, a smaller granules, neutrophil, and the basophil are large blue granules. Monocyte, much bigger cell, and lymphocyte, just a little larger than the red blood cells. And so we look at a smear. Using our reference up to there, we see that these are actually uh, neutrophils. Most of these here are uh, red blood cells, as you know. And then here we can see platelets as well. Lymphocytes, maybe a large one, monocyte, lymphocyte, neutrophils here, and these are red blood cells with platelets. And if you look at the sizes of these different things, you see the neutrophil, monocyte, and eosinophil, and basophil, all those are fairly large. The monocyte could be even larger, but these are fairly large, larger than the lymphocyte. Lymphocyte is, is the smallest nucleated cell. And then you have platelets which has no nucleus there at all. And so, and it also shows you percentages. The greatest percentage of the white blood cell is a neutrophil, and then the next greatest will be the lymphocytes. So you expect to see a lot of neutrophils, a lot of lymphocytes. Some of these other cells are hardly find a basophil. So we see those again. We see platelets here, eosinophil with the red granules, neutrophil, red blood cells, neutrophil, eosinophil, neutrophil, monocyte, monocyte over through there, neutrophil, lymphocyte, neutrophil, monocyte, lymphocyte, uh, that's the same as that, platelets as we can see, neutrophil, lymphocyte, eosinophil, lymphocyte, neutrophil, lymphocyte, eosinophil, we're getting red, red granules. Now if you look at this stomach, this is a, a little piece of stomach and it has a chronic infection and you can see all the white blood cells which you see the dark nuclei of them you can see some plasma cells a higher percentage than you normally see uh, in the stomach these are parietal cells and the chief cells today we're concentrating on the immune cells that are migrating in and here you see a vessel this little venule and you have margination of uh, neutrophils and eosinophils that are located in through there. See the eosinophils and the neutrophils. Now, if we look at an eosinophil, it has large granules and it has a core, a crystalline core, a crystal core that's in these granules. And the basophils are fairly large as well. And both of those have larger granules than you see in a neutrophil. Neutrophil does have some medium-sized granules, and then it also has the dumbbell-shaped granules, which are at the specific granules. In these cases, eosinophil and basophil granules, the big granules, are the specific granules. And so uh, we can see specific granules, which are the dumbbell shape in this immature neutrophil, and also the mature uh, neutrophil, as you can as you can see. But you can see the organelle content a little more specific granules in the more mature one. If we look at that through granulopoiesis, even though we're not going to study the whole process, you will see that the neutrophil, the mature neutrophil, has a libellated nucleus, dark nucleus, and gray cytoplasm. As you see, gray cytoplasm here is composed of both a light and dark granules. But if we look at a neutrophilic myelocyte, a precursor cell, neutrophilic myelocyte, these guys in here, myelocyte in this one, I should say, uh, we can see oval nucleus, not libellated yet, and we can see the cytoplasmic components. There's a lot of non-specific granules are located in there, but some specific granules as well. So what you want to uh, think about when you look at these is that the nucleus is changing, goes from a spherical to uh, oval, indented, highly indented nucleus, and the cytoplasm goes from blue, combination, gray, and then ultimately gray cytoplasm as maturation occurs. Now, if we look at, at blood, we can see uh, lymphocytes here and here, so it's mostly the nucleus, a little bit of cytoplasm. Uh, and here we can see electron micrographs of a lymphocyte. There is a nucleus. It looks round up there, but it's really not spherical. It has indentations, as you see. That's another one there and there and here 
are lymphocytes that we can see. It mostly has ribosomes in through there, a little bit of mitochondria, and some kind of pseudopodia projecting. Here we can see a lymphocyte. There's a nucleus of it, there's a cytoplasm, and it has a high nucleus cytoplasm ratio, namely that the nucleus almost fills up the cell with a little bit of cytoplasm because it's a kind of quiescent cell getting ready to attack things, especially if it's a B lymphocyte. And here we see the large Golgi apparatus on another cell, the monocyte. Monocyte, which is a, one of the biggest cells that's in there, cytoplasm horseshoe shape, located in blood, and comes out and makes a macrophage. And we can see those macrophages here in the lungs. These are dust cells, or macrophages are collecting things. You can see the nucleus there, you can see the, the debris that has, has gotten. Maybe this is a smoker's lung. But here we see electron microscopic view of the monocyte. We can see the pseudopodia, we can see the Golgi apparatus, and this is it at the light microscopic level. And then we have platelets. Platelets are numerous and vary in size, as you can see a platelet here. And the platelets come from the megakaryocytes. Megakaryocytes are located in bone marrow and little pieces of cytoplasm. Megakaryocytes have these vacuoles in here because really it's easy to pinch off some of the cytoplasm if you have the vacuoles that are in there. And so if you look at hematopoiesis, you can see you start with a stem cell, a pluripotent cell, a cell that can give rise to various other cells, and then you see the lineage of the cells change. It makes a red blood cell. This is uh, the eosinophil, neutrophil, basophil from the monocyte series, as you can see. And then we have the macrophage come from the monocyte. The lymphocytes give you plasma cells or T killer cells, and then we get platelets from the omega site. And so if we look at hematopoiesis, we can see red blood cells being formed, the red blood cells, reticular sites, and then you can have younger cell. You've got a nucleus here, no nucleus there, and a blue cytoplasm go from a polychromatic blue and pink, and then mostly blue. So this is the red blood cell series. This is the neutrophilic myelocyte series. This is the mature neutrophil that we see. We see a band cell. We can see indentation, a lot of nonspecific granules and then the uh, blue cytoplasm. So if we look at erythropoiesis, red blood cell formation stimulated by erythropoiesis. So it's stimulated by a protein that's produced in the kidney in response to low oxygen tension. So low oxygen tension will induce erythropoiesis, which will cause the bone marrow to produce more red blood cells. Erythrocyte has no nucleus, reticulocyte has no nucleus, but gray cytoplasm, a little blue tint to it, as you can see. Not red necessarily, but kind of blue tint. And that cytoplasm is the same as the orthochromatic erythroblast. You can see it's the same, but this one has a nucleus. And then as the nucleus gets larger, actually it starts out large and gets smaller but with development. It's a little larger with a polychromatic, and you can see the blue and the pink cytoplasm, polychromatic. And then the basophilic erythroblast, you've got blue cytoplasm here, blue cytoplasm, and a spherical nucleus is what we see. So the nucleus gets smaller and then ultimately is eliminated. The cytoplasm starts out blue, mixes blue with hemoglobin, ends up with few ribosomes, and then and then just hemoglobin, which makes the red blood cell red. If we look at these with an electron microscopic view of red blood cell, as you see, it looks very homogeneous, kind of boring inside, other than it's got the hemoglobin, which is very important. The reticulocyte has hemoglobin and ribosome, and the orthochromatic has uh, more ribosomes. Uh, the polychromatic has more ribosomes, and then you have lots of ribosomes in the basophilic and the, and the pro myelis pro erythroblast. And here we can see the polychromatic, the one which has a combination of ribosomes, as we saw before, and hemoglobin there. So if we look at these uh, again, the mature one is the erythrocyte. A reticulocyte is the immature one passed off. Ortho has a nucleus that ultimately is removed. Polychromatic has blue and pink. I end through there, the nucleus is, get, is less dense. And then a nucleus is really spherical here. Pro erythroblast, very blue cytoplasm that you see there. And that occurs in bone marrow. And we can see bone marrow. We can see some granules here. This is the extravascular space outside a blood vessel. This is a blood vessel right in here. There's a blood vessel, and you can see where a reticulocyte is squeezing through from the extravascular space into the blood space to be into the blood cell. And here we can see where an infection has occurred, and you have margination. Margination is when blood cells stick to the little venules, as you can see here, and then they migrate through. So they marginate through through and through there and here's some that's already extravascular that is they've out they've come outside the vascular to be able to do their job so in summary blood is fluid in cells and cells provide oxygen 
They provide the immune system and the platelets prevent clotting, prevent a loss of blood by the clotting process. And it occurs in bone marrow and uh, in affected states we have a lot of uh, white blood cells that are produced and we can identify those cells in blood. There's red blood cells and platelets and here we can see their lobulated nucleus or non-lobulated nucleus or horseshoe shape. A couple questions. Erythropoiesis is a clonal expansion of erythro erythrocyte progenitor cells derived from the pluripotent stem cells of bone marrow. Yes. Occurs in Extravascular space to the bone marrow. Yes. Is stimulated by a protein secreted by the kidney. Yes. Erythropoietin E. Granulopoiesis is the production of neutrophils. Yes. Eosinophils. Yes. Basophils. Yes. A, B, and C. So we want to thank the, the various books who we borrowed some of the pictures for. Those pictures and drawings were made by others and we want to give them credit. Uh, this is a picture I took in Beijing, China. This is the bird's nest, which was a stadium uh, for the for the Olympics. We were not alone. There were many people already there. So this is the end of medical school histology basic blood. Thank you, and I hope this was helpful to you.